Hey, welcome back, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. Hopefully, we're having a wonderful weekend out there so far and uh, kind of wrapping things up, getting ready to start the new week. And uh, we've got a pretty active scene out there. The big story, obviously, is our invest in the Atlantic, which is likely to become Ernesto, potentially hurricane or even major hurricane Ernesto uh, within the next week or so. And again, unfortunately, impacts are on the way for many folks with that storm uh, into the Caribbean and potentially even uh, into parts of the United States or Canada. That's a big part of this video. We're going to break down for you and let you know exactly where soon to be Ernesto is going. Now, outside of that, we do have some interesting weather back home that we will touch on and talk about the long range pattern a little bit here as well uh, to kind of round out the video. But other than that, if you're new, definitely consider subscribing. We're getting pretty close to 9,000 here. Uh, the big goal is 10,000 by the end of hurricane season. Uh, so again, uh, if you want to help us get there, that would very much be appreciated. Also like the video. And uh, comment, say hi, or just tell me where you're watching from, or let me know what you're seeing out there in your neck of the woods this morning, uh, or something else you could do. Tell me your favorite hurricane story uh, from uh, any storm that you have been through. Personally, as somebody who has never grown up at the beach, uh, I don't really have uh, any stories to tell on that one yet, but I'm sure one day I will. Uh, with all that said, though, let's go ahead and get uh, into this forecast here. So take a look at satellite imagery. You'll notice uh, this is, again, what will become Ernesto, this wave that is currently in the Atlantic Ocean, getting relatively far uh, westbound now uh, and slowly getting its act together. It is dealing with a little bit of shear this morning, but all things considered, still seeing pretty good signs uh, that that center of circulation is beginning to form at the surface. Um, and again, we should have a named storm by probably Tuesday at the latest. So anytime today, tomorrow, or Tuesday, it would be the most likely time for the storm to get named as it moves towards the Antilles uh, and then eventually even potentially Puerto Rico. Uh, and then we'll watch out for Hispaniola, the Bahamas, and then obviously north from there. Now, other than that, we uh, do have a pretty good complex of storms over Oklahoma this morning right next to my head here. Uh, so nothing too severe going on with that, but definitely a pretty good feisty line of storms for you folks out that way. Also a big upper level low, basically right over Michigan right now. That is helping to pump down uh, some cooler, drier air out of Canada for a lot of folks into the Midwest and the Ohio River Valley. And some of that dry air will even try to get into the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, and Mid-South. And I'll show you that map here at the end of the video as well. So that's kind of what we're seeing right now. But to kind of dive on into the tropics a little bit more here, probably the main reason many of you are here. Uh, let's take a look at what's going out into the Atlantic Basin or the main development region or the MDR. There's plenty of names that we have for it. But uh, again, either way, here is Ernesto. Again, notice, or I keep saying Ernesto, it will be Ernesto. Um, you were seeing uh, some convection firing up, though, that storm beginning to become more and more organized this morning and afternoon. Uh, and we'll continue to do so. Again, like I said, development is possible really at any time, but really likely, I'd say, by Tuesday uh, at the latest here. Now, behind that, we have another robust wave coming off of Africa. This one less organized right now, but has plenty of thunderstorm activity to it uh, and could potentially try to develop into a tropical system on down the road. Again, it's getting to that time of the year here where uh, we really have to watch these waves rolling off of Africa uh, with uh, both eyes. All right, now taking a look at uh, the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Again, this is at a 90% chance of developing within the next seven days. I think 60% uh, chance in the next 48 hours is what it's at, or it might be 50. Uh, it's in that ballpark, though. Either way, this is going to develop is what the National Hurricane Center is, say, is uh, saying to us here. Uh, and again, it could happen at any time between now and its journey through the northern Antilles and Puerto Rico. Uh, and that'll be the big storyline here in the Atlantic. And the only thing that we're currently monitoring from the NHC, again, there are other waves that we are keeping a close eye on, but the only thing that has development chances um, within the next seven days as of right now uh, is this invest or soon to be Ernesto. All right, let's take a look at some model guidance here. We'll start with the GFS model. And uh, again, we're going to go ahead and just kind of skip this ahead a little bit towards uh, Monday afternoon and into Monday evening. And here we go. This is the point where we begin to see tropical storm Ernesto take shape. Uh, this is, again, overnight Monday into Tuesday. Uh, and we're seeing the storm, you know, get its act together. We're seeing that convection become a little bit more uh, robust and uh, maintaining itself. Also, that low level of circulation has finally developed at this point and, again, would have the name. So we move this further ahead. This gets us into Tuesday afternoon or getting into Tuesday evening and into the overnight hours of Tuesday for you folks locally here into the northern Antilles. Uh, and again, we've got a pretty good tropical storm here with the pressures around 1,000 millibars. We'd see some gusty winds, some heavy rainfall. 
Uh, but all things considered, nothing you're not used to this time of year. Uh, could even drop below a thousand millibars as it you know crosses through these islands here. But um, again, that would be overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Now we move this further ahead into time on the GFS. This is new from the latest run of the GFS. Yesterday's model run uh, was much further south and kept this south of Puerto Rico uh, and then turned it into Hispaniola. Today uh, it is trended a little bit closer to the European model. Um, although still a tad stronger, but uh, we now have a tropical storm moving through the islands here uh, between the Antilles and Puerto Rico, uh, and then turning north just before getting to Puerto Rico Wednesday afternoon. Now, after that, the storm really begins to strengthen, gets to probably hurricane status here sometime Wednesday evening into Thursday, uh, and continues to strengthen up towards major hurricane status for our Thursday afternoon. You'll notice a strong uh, you know, storm here with low pressures below 970 millibars just to the east of the Bahamas. So with this track, uh, impacts would be relatively limited through Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Uh, we would see, you know, tropical storm impacts into the Antilles. But either way, this would be quite an impressive look on satellite. We would also have some rough surf, uh, you know, in this uh, area of the Atlantic with a storm this strong. Now, after that, the storm continues to strengthen, uh, stays a major hurricane, and then by the time we get to next weekend, about six days from now, and let me draw it for you. It's hard to see on this map, I know, uh, but this is Bermuda, this little island right here. So I'm going to keep that circle there for you uh, and continue to move this ahead into time and watch what happens. Uh, Bermuda is a very close hit, maybe even into that eye wall on the left-hand side of the storm. Now, uh, this is still a week away, and Bermuda is such a small island that the uh, exact track on this is really going to be important, and it always is with Bermuda. Um, but uh, do know that you are in the potential down-the-road track of this storm. And then after that, if we zoom things out into the northern Atlantic, this is, uh, oh, excuse me, back this up just a little bit. Uh, this is at the same time as the storm is near Bermuda. Again, still a major hurricane at this point. Uh, and then the storm continues chugging northward here and gets dangerously close to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland before finally uh, curving all the way back out to sea and then losing its uh, impacts. Uh, and uh, then uh, that would be the end of Bernard Stone in about 10 days or so. Um, so that's just the European model. Excuse me, this is the GFS. I keep saying the European. Uh, that was the GFS or the American model. Um, my bad. Uh, if we take a look at the European model now, <laughs> uh, we will uh, we'll see a pretty similar situation, though. So uh, we move this further ahead into time. Again, this is getting into... Uh, this is Monday afternoon and into Tuesday. You'll notice uh, the European model is still weaker than the GFS. I still think it's playing catch up a little bit. Um, I think we're going to be closer towards the GFS strength wise. I think this will probably be a tropical storm. Uh, this is more of a tropical depression close to open wave uh, Monday night as this is moving through the northern Antilles. Uh, but the GIA, or the European, sorry, I'll get these models right eventually, uh, does eventually catch up here. Uh, with strength and again also a little bit further south of the track here. So uh, this moves through the northern Antilles through Puerto Rico uh, Again, still really just an open wave maybe a tropical depression at this point in time So rainfall some gusty winds and a little bit of uh, Some rip currents and rough seas would be a concern, but really rainfall would be the biggest impact with this model um, But then again finally pulls north and actually pulling north a little bit later than the GFS Which is kind of flipped from yesterday uh, and again, we'll look at ensembles and spaghetti plots in a second here, so don't worry. Uh, we'll get a better idea of the track. But um, <clears throat> then the uh, European does strengthen the storm again towards uh, major hurricane status eventually as we approach uh, Bermuda once again. And I'll circle the island again because I know it's super hard to see here. Uh, this is Bermuda. And uh, we've got a, a major hurricane kind of barreling right towards the island there. Again, this would be about a week from now, more like six days into next Saturday. Uh, and then the island takes basically a direct impact from what would be probably major Hurricane Ernesto uh, at that point in time. And then afterwards, uh, we zoom this out towards the North Atlantic and uh, we get this storm to continue to pull northbound. Uh, and again, it's a close miss from Nova Scotia and Newfoundland uh, and eventually hooks out to sea here. So um, that is the, um, the uh, latest two major models. But again, we will also look at ensembles and let's take a look at steering currents as well, because that's going to be important. Uh, and figuring out the exact track from the storm system. So this is going into this Wednesday and Thursday. I'll go ahead and circle everything that is important. This is Ernesto. This is uh, the Bermuda High. Uh, this is a Hudson River, or excuse me, a Hudson Bay High pressure. And then this is a trough just off the east coast of the United States with a trough axis right about in there. So, you know, we look at this and the general idea is this trough is kind of the most important part. That is a bit of a... Uh, an off-ramp. If we compare this to the interstate, 
Um, here's Ernesto, and uh, it would want to go this way normally. Uh, it would want to continue on the interstate if we had high pressure that was much stronger over Bermuda, uh, but we don't. So what is likely going to happen is we're going to see uh, this off-ramp kind of play out uh, and the storm, you know, move up through this part of the Atlantic. So because of that, um, you know, the storm will pull northward towards the island of Bermuda. Now, what happens next after it gets past Bermuda, they're still uh, up for, you know, some questions. And even beforehand, I'll, I'll mention there is still a slight uh, chance uh, that the storm doesn't pull north so quickly towards Bermuda. And maybe if it's a weaker storm, could kind of get lost in the flow a little bit here and could continue towards the Bahamas and then maybe up towards the southeast coastline or maybe even try to get in the Gulf. That is uh, a lower probability event, but it is still possible. So I'll mention it for sure here uh, as we uh, continue to monitor this. But um, anyway, what happens after Bermuda is going to be quite important. There are some signs that high pressure into the Hudson Bay may try to move back out over the North Atlantic. That could potentially hook the storm a little bit closer towards the United States or Atlantic Canada. Uh, but uh, again, that is another question mark that is more than a week away uh, that we're just going to have to try to answer here. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there are signs another trough will be down uh, into the eastern half of the country. What often happens if the storm is close enough uh, is these troughs like to pull the storm in a little bit. So that is another possibility that could pull the storm closer towards the east coast of the United States or Atlantic Canada. Uh, again, it's something we'll have to watch. But right now, most indications are this will be a storm that goes out to sea after impacting um, Puerto Rico, the Antilles, and after Bermuda. So uh, the Bahamas, Cuba, the United States right now looks pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me, something uh, stuck in my throat here. Um, but we cannot completely rule out impacts. I'll show you why here in just a second. But uh, latest of our main spaghetti models, again, it moves us right over the northern Antilles. Some move it right through Puerto Rico. Some stay a little north of Puerto Rico. Uh, we'll have to monitor that, but that's something we will continue to monitor. Also, strength-wise, um, it's going to be important. All of our models strengthen this basically at least to hurricane status. Some of them, a good portion of them, get this into this red area, which would be major hurricane status uh, in the long run. So, um, we'll watch it. Again, I feel confident that this will be at the bare minimum Hurricane Ernesto at some point. I also feel relatively confident it'll be major Hurricane Ernesto for at least a portion of its life cycle uh, as we get, uh, especially in that gap between Puerto Rico and the Bahamas, or excuse me, and uh, Bermuda. All right, spaghetti plots. So this are the European and its ensemble members, and you'll notice this is why it's not a completely, you know, one and done situation for land impacts past Bermuda. Yes, most of these do kind of curve this out to sea, uh, but you'll notice uh, we also have a pretty good portion of them here uh, that bring us towards Atlantic Canada. Look at all these members up near Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. That would bring pretty big impacts to you folks, so we'll have to watch it. Uh, and again, even one or two members that get this closer towards the Northeast United States. Now, the GFS and its ensemble members, it's a similar story here uh, where, again, most of these do curve out to sea, but we also have a pretty good chunk of them that get far enough north towards uh, Maine, uh, New England, Nova Scotia, or Atlantic Canada up towards Newfoundland uh, that we'll, uh, we'll have to definitely keep an eye on it here and continue to watch the trends in the model. So uh, not, uh, not all done here with the storm system and we will continue to keep you updated here in the long run. All right, that is the latest with soon-to-be Ernesto. Let's take a look now at uh, back home, kind of what we're seeing right now and what the long-range pattern looks like. Again, all the rain currently is kind of into the Rockies. Uh, well, let me pick a color you can see again, sorry. Uh, it's back into the Rockies. Well, I still did not change the color. Oh, my goodness. Uh, here we go. <laughs> all the rain is back into the Rockies uh, and into the Great Plains here, especially out in Oklahoma. We've got a pretty good feisty uh, mesoscale convective system here. Uh, that is uh, kind of working on through the OKC area this morning and working towards the Red River Valley. So other than that, we're pretty quiet in the east. We do have some showers into the Midwest and uh, the Great Lakes, I should say, really, uh, and into portions of uh, the uh, interior northeast. So we're watching for that as well. But uh, all things considered, it's going to be a not super active stretch here in the long run. We will see some interesting types of weather. But the main thing, again, is this upper level low that is currently swinging on through Michigan. Uh, and then into the northeast. That is, again, bringing some shower activity, some stormy activity, and some cooler weather kind of on the backside. Uh, more importantly, nicer uh, dew points bringing that muggy meter on down, which is something we love to see. Now, in the long run, that's eventually going to move out, and troughing will try to stay through the east coast through the middle of this week. But after that, 
Uh, all signs are a ridge kind of builds back into the plains, and we're going to see the country kind of split here. We're going to see uh, troughing in the east, troughing in the west, uh, and a big old ridge kind of in between. So hot uh, and dry in the middle of the country, a little bit cooler, a little bit more stormy into the mid-Atlantic, uh, and then same story for you folks out west. So that's kind of what this general pattern would lead to, and this is about a week or so from now. Um, so, you know, we got time to continue to monitor that and fine tune the details of that long range forecast, but just know uh, that is the current look at it. And uh, we take a look at the next 48 hours with our high, les excuse me, high resolution rapid refresh model, always a tongue twister that is. Uh, getting into this afternoon, again, that complex of storms moving through Oklahoma will continue its march uh, eastbound, getting towards the Little Rock area, the Texarkana area, again, likely to see some showers and storms. Same story for you folks up into the northeast, also into Montreal, Quebec here in eastern Canada. Uh, with that upper level low, it's going to bring some, you know, good showers and storms, maybe some hail. I wouldn't completely rule out some small hail uh, and uh, maybe a couple of stronger storms with some wind. But uh, all things considered, um, you know, relatively tame. Now we will also see some showers and storms in the southeast, the Carolinas. I know you're about tired of the rain, but uh, more afternoon pop-up storms this afternoon, even in areas that really do not need it, back towards Fayetteville, uh, Greenville, North Carolina, New Bern, Wilmington. Uh, so much rain has fallen over there the past week, uh, but we could see more this afternoon. Now getting into the overnight tonight, another complex of storms looks to move out of the Rockies and into uh, the Great Plains here from Kansas into Missouri. Iowa, again, could see some feisty storms embedded in that, but really a lot of rain will probably be the bigger concern and also some leftover showers into the Northeast and into the Carolinas and especially just offshore here. Uh, going into overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. Now we get this into tomorrow afternoon, into our, oh, I went a little far ahead there, into our Monday afternoon. Again, scattered showers and storms into the Carolinas, more scattered showers and storms up into the Northeast, and another complex of storms and showers uh, kind of through the same areas there uh, through Arkansas. So um, it's just going to be kind of, you know, a hit or miss storms the next couple of days. It's going to depend where you're at. Some of us are going to see more than others. Some of us are going to see no rain at all. That's just kind of the way it is this time of year. Uh, as I'm sure many of you are uh, aware of. But the good news is, again, we are seeing some nicer air out there this afternoon. Look at these dew point values, and uh, this might be overdone just a tad for some of us, but uh, many of us not getting above 60 for a dew point value uh, right through the heart of the east of the country from uh, the Ohio River Valley, even down south, Nashville, Birmingham, uh, Knoxville, Louisville, uh, Charleston, West Virginia. A lot of these cities kind of far south here are going to see some nicer air, uh, and uh, especially folks up into the Midwest, though, from Detroit. Uh, even into eastern Canada, Montreal, Quebec, the northeast, going to see some of that nicer air. Unfortunately, for those of us in the Carolinas, yeah, we're, we're getting left out here. Same story for you folks down into south Georgia and Florida. It's hot. It's muggy. Uh, I said this uh, yesterday. It feels like hell in the ocean had a baby outside. So uh, it's uh, it's just not a fun time, unfortunately. Same story for you folks out here towards uh, the uh, Gulf Coast of Texas and up into the Oklahoma City area, Louisiana, Arkansas. Also some muggy air for you folks. So uh, we've kind of got uh, more of a heart shape in between. <laughs> we've got that nicer weather, but uh, uh, unfortunately, not all of us are going to be uh, involved in that. So uh, after that, though, do not uh, do not fret, you summer lovers. We will see that muggy air return this week, especially for the middle part of the country uh, into the uh, you know Mississippi River Valley. But we could hold on to that drier air a little bit longer. This is even Wednesday afternoon. You'll notice that heart shape of sorts uh, kind of moves east a little bit. So. Uh, the Ohio River Valley and into the Northeast, the Northern Mid-Atlantic will still be hanging on to some of that nicer air. Uh, but all things considered, uh, things will kind of go back downhill uh, mugginess wise, especially in the long run here. Uh, you know, a week or so out from now, we're all right back uh, in the thick of it. All right, so we are going to see again, kind of like I showed you with the next couple of days, these complexes of storms. That'll be a theme, I think, through the next week or two. Uh, and obviously, whatever Ernesto does or whatever happens in the tropics will be important as well. But just notice, I'm going to kind of, you know, move through this. But watch this kind of train of showers and storms working on through this general area. Uh, that's uh, going to be something to watch for over the next week or so. Uh, again, kind of just these complexes moving out of the Rockies. There are signs that maybe at the end of this week, a more defined storm system could try to work on through. Uh, we'll see what that does. Again, we'll monitor it here in the long run. It's just a little too soon to know exactly uh, what's going to happen, but it is a sign we're getting closer to fall. We're getting closer to these mid-latitude cyclones, which I love tracking as they bring severe weather and some snow. Uh, again, a little, too, uh, a little too soon to start talking snow here. Got another month or two to go, but uh, it is a sign of things changing, which is always super fun. Uh, and then taking a look at the uh, 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook map. Again, central part of the country, it's going to be hot, as I mentioned with that ridge. The mid-Atlantic and the west coast is going to be a little bit more average to below average. 
And part of the reason for that is going to be the rainfall outlook. Again, higher chance of above average rainfall into the east and out into the northwest, the Pacific Northwest, uh, with drier conditions into the south central part of the country. So that is the latest there. I appreciate y'all uh, tuning in here on this Sunday morning. Uh, I will be back tonight with an update on the tropics uh, all around uh, for the long range tropics and the current tropics. Uh, and uh, I'll give you the latest then. But uh, for now, that's all I got for you. Have a great rest of your Sunday morning. Uh, and uh, I'll see y'all tonight.